In this video, I interview Wrist Rose 2 on how to be consistent when life is crazy, building your influence outside of YouTube and pageantry right now. What's up, influencers? Today, I have a very special interview with the Wrist Rose Dose. <laughs> Thank you so much for having of me. Of course, thank you for coming over to my house. Hi, I'm Marissa Castillo, your Mrs. Nevada United States 2016. Thank you so much for watching. You guys know I love you so much. So uh, my first question is, yep. because you've been in YouTube, maybe longer than really most of YouTube, can you tell us about what it was like starting your YouTube channel? What was your motivation and what your journey was uh, to today? Um, I originally started off as a makeup artist and I saw a video on YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, a girl doing a smoky eye and working at Mac at the time. I was a product specialist. I, you know, did makeup applications. So I said, you know what? I can do this too. So I did step by step. I think back then it was only you could only do 10-minute videos. Yep, yep. So I didn't know how to edit. I had a really cheap camera mm -hmm. and we I all did. put it in <laughs> front of our on top of some shoe boxes in front of a window. Yeah. And there I just went. I put a little timer, just did a quick little eye number yeah. and then that was it and then before you knew it, I mean, people were like, well, how do you do this? How do you do a cat eye? How yep. do you put on lashes? How do you do this, that, and the other? And I just started doing requests. So that's that's how it was. And now there's tripods and DSLRs yeah, and yeah, 1080p yeah. and all this other stuff. When I think we all started, it was really raw. Really, yeah. really raw, very organic. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that uh, a lot of people might not know is Judy, my wife of It's Judy Time, actually watched Marissa's videos as inspiration. In fact, maybe she learned from you mm -hmm. to do the videos in front of a window uh -huh. for the good lighting yes. and stack on a, a, a pile of shoe boxes because I wasn't smart enough to get her a tripod yet. <laughs> um, can you tell us about how YouTube has changed and how your, I guess, YouTube career or YouTube experience has changed from then? Well, before we didn't make money. Yep. Oh you yeah. Know, we there was we no partner program. It. No, back there then. was not at all. And I think within two months, I was asked to be a partner, and mm -hmm. that was really cool because then you had the ad on the side of your video, mm -hmm. and you know, I you and I don't even think you made money really then. You were just kind of like a partner. Yeah. And then you know, I took a little hiatus, and then I came back, and people were just making money. Yeah. Like it, yeah. that's where it was at, and. I just, you know, people started doing it for the money. People didn't really do it just because it was fun and yeah. that's where your heart was. But then again, you were able to be a single mom and stay yeah. home, which is where it yeah. took me. Totally. And, you know, you just started connecting because YouTube just went crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just all over the place. And that's, that's where you, I mean, I learned how to fix my dishwasher from YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's awesome. Yeah, it is. So Marissa... Yep. You know, a, a lot of times we get questions about time management because mm -hmm. a lot of people are working full-time jobs, their parents, and you know, it, it can be a lot of work, especially for a beginner. Yes. When you first started, you had a full-time job. Yeah. You're a single mom of twins, which I know can be a handful, yes, right? right? And you were still uploading videos very mm -hmm. consistently, growing your influence on social media. Can you give us a little advice for the viewers on you know what it took to do that and any tips for them to have time management? Um, I think my following, they recognize that I made my daughters, my family, a part of the videos. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cool because now, who watches my videos? Moms with their kids. Yep. And they watch the kids grow up. I mean, they were five when I started and they were braiding my hair, they were playing games in the back, but you just kind of act like they're not there and you just yeah. do the makeup tutorial, you get it done because that's what I love to do. So if you kind of just make it a family thing or you know, let the kids put the makeup on yeah. you and make yeah. that a video, make it fun. So then they appreciate it and they see what mom's doing and then they just, you know, they it kind of, downward spiral like type of 
feel. So yeah. I think that no matter how much is on your plate, if you literally cut time out yeah. and you make it, you yeah. know, make it a point like, hey, I'm going to spend an hour doing a video and maybe it won't get done or you won't be able to edit it, but you feel that accomplishment. I think when you feel accomplished, you it motivates you to, to do more. Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of the, what feeds people's motivation, right? Like once you upload that video, you're yeah. like, oh man, that felt good. And you want that feeling mm -hmm. every time. And then obviously the response. I love what you said though about uh, even though you had kids, you just fit that taping into your schedule as a mother, right? right. And I think that's a great point. It's like, just go with the flow of your life right. to create your YouTube channel content, Absolutely. right? Like people want this perfect like type of video and what actually might have been perfect not just for you but for other people is just do it the way that fits into your life in fact mm -hmm. because of that you probably were able to cut out time correct right yeah no absolutely i still don't get it when people have like candles in the back <laughs> and like nice stuff i'm like i don't got time for that that's no. let, let, let's get my laundry and i, I think everybody knows the bra hanging on the doorknob Yep, that that yep, was my yep. signature because it's just, it's real. It's real. And I think that's what keeps a loyal following. You don't have to have a million subscribers. You just have to have your quality, quality loyal followers. And that's, I think that's what I have. And I love them. Love them all. Cool. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously it's been like, it, you can see it in the success of your channels mm -hmm. that even with your busy schedule, you were able to accomplish what you have been able to accomplish. Another thing that I'm really impressed with, and maybe you don't uh, really um, you know, talk about a lot, is the <laughs> fact that you've been able to move from platform to platform on social media, uh -huh. right? Because I'm always learning from you what the next best thing. In, in fact, just yesterday you were telling me about YouTube Capture, which is yes. three years old, and I didn't even know that being a YouTuber. <laughs> Can you talk about the importance of social media and how it's helped you kind of promote your content on YouTube? Well, it is a bit much when you start having Snapchat, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, oh. like you, it's a lot. Um, that's why I'm glad that you can, you know, leak from Instagram to the yeah. Twitter to the Facebook. It's, it's a lot easier and I'm very thankful for that. Um, but if you're going to have a brand, you need to be dedicated to it. And, yep. and that does include all of the social media outlets, but it's also great to connect like one-on-one -on -one and being on Twitter and answering, you know, just random little questions. It, yeah. it makes that loyal following and they feel personal with you. And, you know, sometimes you reply and they're like, oh my gosh, you replied, but that's just what keeps your connection. And then you can talk to them because we're all human beings. Yep. I mean, it's not just about beauty and makeup anymore. It's like about sharing accomplishments and being, you know, one on one in family. So yeah. I just talked to somebody today who's uh, building their influence on Instagram and just said, you know, when she you know, responds and she's got about 3000 Instagram followers and she's just starting her viewers of her Instagram account really appreciate it. That response. Yes. right? Because a lot of people don't. And like you said, right. you have to be dedicated. Yes. Right? Like if you want an audience that's gonna trust you, that's gonna wanna follow you from platform to platform and like be basically lifelong viewers like you had, mm -hmm. you have to have that engagement. You do. Yeah. And people appreciate that. When I go through my YouTube comments and I still comment, they're yep. like, oh my gosh, you actually reply. And they that means the world to me. And if they're gonna spend time to watch my videos mm -hmm. and comment on my videos, I should give them the same respect. And I think that it goes a very long way. Totally. I mean, I think that's why we're friends because you must have responded to Judy, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, there wasn't really another way other than maybe Twitter to right. get a hold of each other. Yeah. And that's when we met back in 2009. Yeah. And uh, we were lucky enough to have lunch oh, with Marissa back yeah. then with another YouTuber, which we're still friends with till this day. Till so. this day. Very <laughs> close friends. So, you know, a lot of people when they first start YouTube or like see YouTubers and want to become a YouTuber, they mm -hmm. think the success has to happen on YouTube. Mm -hmm. What I love about interviewing you right now is the fact that you're finding success in something totally outside of social media, mm -hmm. right? Which is being Mrs. Nevada, United States, right? Yes. But can you tell us how being an influencer on YouTube as well as social media has, if it has, affected that and how you can use social media to help you accomplish things outside of the internet? 
Um, I think that social, like, okay, my family, my YouTube social media family, right? Everybody's seen me pretty much grow up. I've been through, you know, drug through dirt, single mom, working hard, stressed yeah. out, all that. And then as I got older, I just grew and I started accomplishing things. I was independent. I was doing this, that, and the other. And then I found pageantry, which I think that everybody has a stereotype of a pageant girl. Yeah. But being now that I'm 33 years old, I'm married, I'm established, I wanted to change that stereotype. So I wanted to show my journey into pageantry with my YouTube family. Yep, so yep. it was like, people are like, wow, like pageantry isn't what I thought it was. Yep, and yep. oh my gosh, it, you really are getting into the community. You know, I took the kids to the Philippines two different times mm -hmm. and you know, we saw the rural areas. We saw what it was like to yep, give. Yep. We saw what it was like to, to be there and feed, you know, the hungry. And so I wanted to bring that back here. And yep. I take my YouTube and my social media, my Snapchat, all that with me yeah. doing volunteer stuff and, and all of that. So I, I just don't, I, I appreciate having that loyal following yeah. and social media. And I'm glad that I can take that because now I'm using social media in a very positive light, yeah. which a lot of people don't realize that that is our tool. Like we can <laughs> do so much with social media if yeah. we have a purpose to yeah. do so. Cool. And I think it's a perfect transition to the next topic how your influence on social media, obviously YouTube as well, has influenced you to uh, achieve a new goal, mm -hmm. being a life coach. Can you tell us about that? Yes. And you know, what you're doing with that right now? Um, well, uh, being a single mom and whatnot, I would get these emails yeah. or messages on YouTube and you know, women would be like, I'm a single mom too, how do you do it? Yeah. And I kind of turned into like a Dear Abby. Yeah. So I didn't know really what to call myself. Maybe was I a, like a mentor, like a big sister? Because yeah. I had, you know, women older than me. Thousands. Like and, thousands. And, you know, our young teens, girls that are my daughter's age, you yeah. know, on social media. And I'm like, including I don't Including Judy. Including you know? Judy, yes. And so when I wanted to figure out my platform for pageantry, I just wanted to be... Um, someone who empowered uh, women, empowering women, setting a good example, being a role model, and just really being uh, a title holder that set forth and did stuff for her community yep. and just really, you know, brought women up. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna go to school to like college or anything, yep. but I found a couple certification classes where I, be I could become a life coach. Yep. And it was more or less just self-discovery Everybody has their own answers. They just don't know how to get there. So setting goals, even yeah. if they're just daily small goals or big, huge goals. Yeah, and you will, if you don't mind, we'll put a link to your life coach yeah. stuff, right? Down in the info mm -hmm. box so you can, if you're a mother, uh, a young lady that would like to get in contact, um, even older ladies, I mean, I guess. Anybody. Anybody, really, yeah. right? get a hold of Marissa, we'll put that information down below. So we're gonna go into something fun, we call it the lightning round. Ooh, We have yes. to do lightning. What does lightning look like to you physically? <laughs> Mine's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Talking or texting? Talking. Would you rather never use social media sites, apps again, or never watch another movie or TV show? Oh. I would never, uh, a TV show. I would rather not watch a TV show. That's like a true YouTuber. Yeah, right that there. is a true YouTuber. <laughs> Person you most trust with a secret? Ooh, my sister. If influencers could only watch one channel on Wrist Rose Dose, one video, oh. which one would it be? Ooh, that's a really good question. One of my vlogs, because they're fun. Last thing you grabbed out of the fridge? These drinks. Oh, yeah. That was easy. <laughs> if you could only have one thing in a zombie apocalypse, what would it be? Uh, a gun. A gun. I right? might too. Smart, yeah. Totally. I mean, because they're coming after right. you. Favorite YouTube channel right now? I like Julie's World. Book or movie every influencer should read? The Power of Now by mm. Eckhart Tolle. I've read it probably three times and on audiobook. You know, a lot of people flock to Los Angeles, to mm -hmm. New York, because you know those are like the gathering places for YouTubers. I think that's one thing that you and Judy and myself can relate to. Like, we didn't do that because this is where our family was, right. this is where our life was. Can you tell us about uh, what 
tips or advice you would have for people that don't live in those places and how to make the most of it? That's actually a really good question. Um, you know, Vegas is so close to LA yeah. and it's the entertainment capital of the world. So there's so much mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. But when you actually start seeking out local businesses, yeah. you can actually start like doing collaborations with them. A little boutiques, little yeah. uh, makeup places, little um, mom and pop yeah. places. Yep. You can see and, you know, seek out other vloggers, bloggers, because I mean, they're everywhere. And arguably, it'd be much easier in mm -hmm. a, a smaller city, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe a city that's not LA or New York because influencers might not be as popular in those areas, right? right? So it's a great uh, example of how you can create opportunities for yourself even more so than where everyone flocks to. Right, yeah. or I mean, even hit me up. I'm always down for a collaboration or some type of something. You know where you mail yeah. each other different things? Where uh -huh. you, oh, you, yeah, yeah. You know, do like the split screen video or you tag somebody. We used to always tag people or do like a reply, you know, recreate somebody, like a big YouTuber's look. Yeah. And let them know, hey, I just recreated your look, da 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 da. That's, that's great to bring more attention to where you are at. Anyways, thank you so much, no, Marissa. thank you so much. Honored to be able to interview you, um, considering we've been friends so long. Yes. And thank you so much for your friendship. Of thank course. you for uh, uh, having us here. Please share with the audience how they can find you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously we'll put up the life coaching link. Yes. And anything you want to leave with our audience, which are video influencers. Uh, you can find me anywhere, Wrist Rose 2 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, there's also Wrist Rose Dose, which is my vlog lifestyle yep. channel. And um, yeah, that's it. Usually I go by Wrist Rose too. And if you want to follow my journey as a title holder, you can find me Mrs. Nevada United States 2016 on Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank so you, you guys check it out. Thank, Thank you, you so much, influencers. Aww. We're helping you build your influence, yes. income, and impact with online video. Be inspired. My name is Marissa and I won't diss ya. How's that bird? Shush! Be quiet! <laughs> oh. Look at he's right on the top. Yeah. Shush. There you go. Hey. He's leaving. He left. He's out. <laughs>